Welcome back to the Island of the Arts. I'm Oliver Luke Delory, and in this episode, we'll learn the value of guidance and support along the creative journey. Let's go. Sometimes a mentor comes into your life and then you're just really, really lucky. I was a mentor to my young friend um, and it's a very exciting place to be. Um, for myself, um, I think as a, as a teacher, uh, I was an art educator for a long time at all different ages. I think, a and I also was educated as an artist. so. Sometimes it can be helpful and sometimes it can be just devastatingly wrong. And so people are so crushed by their, their tender new work that they, they leave art. And I've heard that so many times and it's, it's heartbreaking because it kind of crushed someone, you know. Um, teachers can give you techniques but, or tell you about media, but I don't think anybody, any teacher can really make you an artist. Um, Artist is more than just like using materials and making pictures. It's like a life. It's a commitment. Um, you need perseverance, determination. You need to put things aside. You need to sacrifice things if you're going to do your work because life flows in and the terms of success in the world are how much have you sold, how many shows have you had, those are the terms of success. So it's hard to get a really good grounding, especially if you're successful, that is the worst thing. The people that have influenced me, when I look at them as a group, a small group, is they're all artists who have moved ahead. They're all artists like George O'Keefe, who did one thing and then moved into something completely different. Um, uh, Bobby Bergers, she's a current artist. She's in West Vancouver. She's international. She was doing still lives of little vases and now she's completely changed. Her work is amazing and wonderful. So any movement that I would say those are the people that I that would mentor me even though I don't know them. Um, I had an experience, my, my big experience um, when I was 30 I went to university and um, I had an art class with Alice Mansell who's a Canadian artist and uh, she showed us a film called Ways of Seeing by John Berger. And when I saw that film, even though I was like in getting a B ed, I, was, I had no artwork. But when I saw that film, I thought, I am an artist, <laughs> you know, like I am an artist. And it, was, it wasn't even about that. He was just talking about looking at pictures and he just like opened everything up for me. So from then on, then I pursued painting. Uh, because it was an art educator, I had a chance to do weaving, pottery, architecture, you know, like I just explored all around everywhere and it, everything sifted down to painting. But it was that, it was, it was that, that thing. And so actually about five years ago, um, I sat down and I wrote a letter to John Berger, who was like 80 or something at the time. And I told him that I'd seen this film and how much it had changed me. And I just like wrote this letter. And um, he sent me a copy of one of his books with the most amazing inscription. And in my studio, I've got a picture of him there with that inscription. And sometimes when it's not going well, when I feel like giving up or I wonder what am I doing? in the time of climate crisis and war, I'm painting a picture like, what? And I read that inscription and I just think, okay, that's what you're doing. So that's real mentoring, I think, yeah. Um, I started doing art with a local artist in Nanaimo, her name's Penny, um, and I guess what I liked about her art is, I think it was just her story about her and why she did art. 
but she also introduced me to another artist that is a very intuitive free play artist, and that's Flora Boley. And she's online everywhere, and I haven't actually met her, but um, I have taken some of her courses online as well. But she is just a very intuitive play artist. And so I liked that my very first art class was pick three colors that you're drawn to and just put it on a canvas and play like a kid. And I was like, whoa, man, I thought I signed up for an art class. I paid 175 bucks to do this? Okay, right? But I, after that process, I was like, this is really, really fun. And what I notice when, I, when I've taken other art classes with other people, there are people that really struggle doing that. They, 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 they just don't know how to let themselves go. And I think that that's really cool in art when you let yourself go. Um, I think things, that's when you come out. So that's what I find really cool. So, so Penny was definitely a, Penny and Flora Boley. Um, I learned art, the elements of art and all those things from my, an art teacher that I've worked with for about four years in Shimanas. His name is Barry. And uh, so he taught me the elements of art and I was seeking that because I just didn't feel, I guess, confident in what I was doing. So I just needed to know what those were. And I could have sought that online, but I just needed somebody to just guide me through that, those processes as well. Um, and then I also worked with him, with, with my teacher Barry, and he also worked with Nicholas Wilton, who is also an online instructor that is pretty well known, um, I would say in the online world. He's from California and he just went into it even more, how to make your paintings that much better. So, you know, th those people were, those people have been sort of my mentors. I feel like I'm a little mentorless at the moment, like just kind of free, free winging it, but just living here on the island, there's artists everywhere. So I'm, you know, now that COVID's over, I feel like I'm getting out and speaking with more artists. And there's one artist on the island that I just, I'm, I'm actually going to take her course um, with Gwen Spinks. And she's just been, um, She's just been a, maybe a support person with the markets and things like that. So, you know, I just know that I'm gonna take her class and I'm excited to do it. It's a layering class. Um, but I just know that I can ask her, I know I could, so yeah. And there's lots of other people in the community that are there to support me, there, there is. We're living in Ottawa and I was actually going to take a knitting course. And you know, I could knit a square. I thought, okay, I could do something more with this. And the knitting course got cancelled due to weather. It was always snowing or storming, and I had to go across town. And a stained glass artist moved in next door to us. And he set up a course. He had a course in his basement that first winter, and he was kind of short a person. And I was chatting with them out in the driveway. And I said, well, I'll come over, you know, in my slippers and my <laughs> once a week. And that stuck. And, um, you know, so at first it was just convenience with him. And then I ended up working with him for a long time. He became my teacher and mentor. And I worked in a shop and I sold stuff. We did all kinds of things together. But, you know, the thing that I liked about uh, stained glass was the um, history of it, that it's been around for such a long time. The medium itself, although the production of glass has changed, of course, the medium itself uh, really hasn't. And I like the limitations of it. People, often people will say to me, especially glass workers will say, oh, I used to do stained glass, but I gave it up because, you know, this is much easier and whether it's fusing or blowing or whatever they're doing. But I like the constrictions of it. That in itself is a challenge. And it's very similar to the old days of graphic design. It really is. It's like you're designing by hand. Well, you could be on a computer, but um, you know, that's how, that's how graphic design used to be. You had to do all the different layers and everything had to be put in its place in the right order and the right thing. So there's a process 
that I enjoy as well as like a creativity to it. My great-grandmother, she taught me how to sew on, on a uh, treadle uh, foot uh, sewing machine, a singer or craft sewing machine. And so she taught me the basics of sewing. And so I was always interested in how to do things. And then I knew we had this factory in our town. In our town. And for some reason, I don't know how I found that place, like where they left the pieces, right? But I just felt so excited. I had a girlfriend waiting on the corner and I sneaked in and I would go to the dump site and pick up some pieces and then was so excited to come home and then glue them together with glue and then maybe do some stitching and then I just would make little change purses, right? And I felt so excited about it, the whole process. And then I got caught, right? <laughs> so the owner of the factory, she caught me and um, she knew my parents, she knew me too. And so she said, you know, you can't really come here because it's not safe for children. It's, it's not a good environment, but um, I can give you something really nice here. You get a nice piece of leather and uh, you can make something out of it and just show it to me. But don't come back, please. <laughs> okay, so I was really excited about this, but I also was scared because I was caught. But I had this in, in, um, beautiful piece of leather and I could use it and make something bigger out of it. And I thought, wow, that was so generous of this lady, right? And it always stuck to me. You know, that was kind of the beginning for me of getting more into leather work. Marianne and I spent 15 years blowing glass once a week, at, you know, for four hours a night. Three hours a night was actual class length. Um, and watching other glass blowers in that environment, that environment is all about demo and imitation demo imitation and uh, so there's there's a great deal of learning that comes from that environment um, once you're off on your own um, you start realizing pretty quickly how little you actually see <laughs> of that demo and so on I've I've looked at the same YouTube videos for years now and each time I go back to it I'm going oh that's what he's doing you know it Every movement translates into something. So, from that perspective, um, it's an ongoing thing. Um, being a partnership in what, how we create, we learn from each other all the time. Uh, that's also important. If I was going to start out glass blowing again, um, I might be tempted to get a BFA in glass blowing, <laughs> just to deepen things a little bit, but. Um, you need to start somewhere. Glass blowing is a very complex thing to begin with, it, and it's not very rewarding. It's in fact it's painful. <laughs> so it, it's good to have a mentor to start you off. Um, just one example, you know, I one of our my teachers on the very first class lined us up, and we got our blowpipes ready, and we went to the furnace and we did a gather, and that's all we did for three hours was just a gather. And each time he said, okay, this time I want you to turn it more often. This time I want you to hold it when you finish. Um, you know, we kept upping the rules until we were actually in there rotating the pipe 12 times, relatively evenly. And uh, we had overcome our fear of the heat that was blasting out of that furnace. And that, um, that mentorship was worth a lot because everything starts from that, those first gathers. If you have globs of glass that are all uneven and everything else, um, you have a fight on your hands, a battle on your hands, because the glass will tell you what it wants to be. If you can start off evenly and calmly and be used to that 2100 degree Fahrenheit heat blasting at you, then you've established patience, which is an essential, uh, an essential ingredient to creation. I'm a self-taught person, but a lot of people have inspired me. And uh, they're not necessarily artists, you know, like Nelson Mandela, Bishop Tutu, and, and uh, you know, anyone that's doing something special or giving back, and they're not destroying or, or uh, and, and they're not thinking about just themselves, and they want to do stuff for, there's a lot of need out there, there's a lot of people who aren't as privileged or as, as we are, you know, and if you realize that, 
and, and you can give a little bit back, you know, help someone who's less fortunate than you are. Those people inspire me. Like the young woman I just met, that just blows me away, a young lady from New Jersey. She was 19 years old, went to Nepal and saw these little children breaking rocks by hand. And, and she saw that and thought, you know what, I'm not, not gonna, I'm gonna do something with all this. And here's this 19 year old woman, uh, young lady, and she, now she's 35 years old, and I just happen to be another Gabriola story, and how privileged we are to live here. I met her in Gabriola. She adopted 50 children on her own. And, and, and that, that is what, that's the kind of person that inspires me. And it connects to my art, you know, and now I'm on board. I'm, I, I want to be part of her. I want to, and if I can use my art to, uh, to help that out, that's what's important to me. Nothing else, you know. And, and you know, so people like that. There's a lot, anyone doing good. I haven't even met half of these people. I know there's so many people out there, and, and uh, those are like my mentors, and those are the people who inspire me, you know. And, and my partner Anna, she inspires me because she's been with me all through this journey and been beside me and already loved me and uh, and everything you see it's not just me not you know, no one can do it alone you know nobody we're not we're not capable of uh, making it alone you know, you know people who buy my work inspire me you know i know some people who've owned 20 of my pieces over 30 years they've kept and those are the people that i'm just in you know in reverence of you know and, and uh, you know and I'm also, uh, I like the Dalai Lama, you know, I'm, in my soul I'm a Buddhist, you know, but I'm not just a Buddhist, I'm just a human being, and people who do good like that and are going to promote good causes and help others. There's a young fellow, a YouTube guy that I've seen, he lives in, uh, in, uh, in he, now he lives in India, but he goes around and he, his name is Ted Konchuk. And I don't, I've never met this guy, I don't know, but he's kind of, he's younger, he's like 27 years old, he's my hero what, by what he's doing. He goes around and he he, he helps, he films in these guys and he, he helps the poorest of the poorest and he gives them money and he gives them food and, he, and that's what he does. He's not just like a tourist all for himself, you know, and, and this is, this guy is very special to me and he's a Buddhist. And he's from Tibet, living in India, and the need is in India, you know. And uh, people give him money, and he just gives it back. He gets it in one hand, and he gives it back to these really, really needy people. And he will help people who he knows that are deserving, even someone with a little business. They're trying to sell chapatis, and they're with a little container, and he will help them out. He will give them money. And, and to me, there's a lot of people like that, and I... I'm sure I'm going to meet more and more, but those are the kind of people, and that's what the inspiration is for me, you know, and, and, and it gives me something to, I wake up every day and I think of all these great people, it makes me want to keep doing, you know, it makes me want to give back, and I feel privileged now, so whenever I do a show, all the work I've made, and whenever I do a show, people buy my work, they're not just getting a piece of my work, they're contributing to to my kids in Guatemala who need, they're sleeping on the dirt floor, who need a bed, and I can accommodate, you know, just give a little bit. I, I'm not interested in leaving a legacy. After I'm dead and gone, nothing really matters. I want to do it right now. So all these people who help me, I'm inspired by them, and I'm inspired by the little children who can, uh, who, who can have a good night's sleep, and they can go to school, and I would love to see them become something, you know, help them a little bit to make them a better person, ease the pain in their life. So, other than that, you know, I live a very simple life, and simple things really uh, turn me on. Mentors are uh, a, truly a gift from God. Um, I think that, I, and I have had well, three that I can think of, two, te two dance teachers and uh, one art teacher that are, um, that changed my life, that believed in me. Uh, I think mentors um, 
are guides and mostly guides to believe in yourself, to know that you can do something. They, they believed I could do something before I, I believed it. And that I think is the true value of a, a mentor or teacher is to encourage, to, to um, give to the students. Uh, for um, a few years, I taught dance at the school and it was the greatest joy. Uh, because these kids, you know, like they they have such characters and and curiosity and already attitude and stuff. I remember this this one boy, uh, he wouldn't dance. He absolutely refused to dance. He would stand there with his arms crossed and, and, and do absolutely nothing. And I walked up to him one day and I said, I know you don't like to dance, but I know that when you decide you want to dance, you're going to be great. And I walked away. Now, honestly, I have no idea if that kid could dance or not, but he didn't know that. And it's about giving that kind of power uh, to a kid. I remember another time I ran into a parent of one of the students and, and I said, oh, Johnny's doing great, really, oh, he's fabulous, right? Well, they must have gone back and told the child this um, because the next time the kid was like twice as good as he ever was, right? Because he was told he was good. He was told that a teacher believed in him. And I think this is, this is what's so important, is that if someone else believes in them, they will believe in themselves. And they will succeed, and they will be good. You know, I believe in, if you can talk, you can uh, sing. If you can walk, you can dance. And uh, everything is possible. And it's just about, letting someone know that and I think that's the the real value in any kind of teacher or mentor. I think if you look through to the past, um, through some of the most wonderful artists in, in history, most of them had mentors. They That's the kind of schooling that used to take place. An artist would work with a master, a master sculptor, a master painter. Um, and uh, and it never, I don't think it ever stifled creativity. I think you learn process, you learn things, you, you take a little bit of this and then you, you branch out and you do your own thing. It's always like building blocks anyways. You know, the first person that did um, Impressionism spurred on a whole group of people that were doing Impressionism. And uh, what a beautiful process. But it started with kind of one person and then others mentored from that or just observed and, and picked up. So I think that's usually, it's like building blocks. Um, the whole art world grows from that. Yeah, same with the film industry. You know, somebody comes up with a new technique, well, lo and behold, it starts showing up in, in other areas. Mentors definitely were role models. My mom, my mom is very creative. She paints, we, as children, we're like, sad. we were given like big pieces of paper and the, my brothers and I would sit around and draw cartoons and just spend a lot of time producing art together when I think generally she's trying to get us to settle down or something like that. But uh, she'd always be painting, so I'd bring my paints along and paint alongside her and uh, she's always been encouraging through everything I create and do. Uh, of course, as a mother, <laughs> she thinks everything I do, do is wonderful, but uh, definitely having her uh, and teaching me so many things has for sure influenced me a lot. I wouldn't be, I don't think I'd, I would be painting as much, or, or maybe I would have been, but uh, yeah, that uh, she was a big mentor. And then I guess on, on the island, having uh, lots of friends around that are encouraging, like my uh, friend Usher, she's uh, definitely encourages me to, to probably push my boundaries a bit more than I would uh, regularly do, so it's nice, it's, it's, it's a nice environment to be in. In high school, and that's going pretty far back, um, I was in the art room all the time. I had a teacher, a favorite teacher. She just let me be in there, even when it wasn't my class. Like, I would just be there. And I learned to 
to be mad at the artist. She was a really, well, that works or it doesn't, or you need to do this, or this is why. And I listened and I was enrolled in art school. I got in, I was going to Emily Carr, I was gonna do it all and I stopped and I paused and I was like, I don't wanna do it. I didn't want to be influenced away from what I just thought was good. I know learning from teachers and going to art school would have taken me on a completely different path. Learning how to do things properly probably would have been smart to do, but I was more of a, again, with starting out, I'm gonna do this my way, it's going to work, and I took the hard road. Along the way, I took courses of oil painting classes, just night classes of figure drawing. I joined up with a couple of pottery classes. Um, I liked learning on my own time as I did my own thing. So that all played a role, a big part for me. Even with meeting other artists, I really appreciate people who just found something that works for them and are still willing to say, what, what did you do there? How did that, how did you do that? Why did you do it that way? That's really cool. I mean, that they're interested in learning still, same, same as me. Like, I don't know much about pottery, but I had a mission to carve pottery chicken earrings. I was on a mission. And another artist here took me under her wing and was like, okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. And it works. Like, so that's where I find my mentorship. Like, it comes out of weird places, but it's there. And the, the courses that I take, the other artists here on the island, they definitely, now that I'm older and not in high school, guide you towards just keeping it fresh. Interesting. Um, the teacher that had the most impact on me, the only good teacher I, I had in all of my schooling was my grade eight English teacher. Um, and she was the honors teacher for um, grade nine and 10. So I, st I stayed with her and she was the first adult I had met that was just like, you got to figure out what your story is. Never mind what all these other people are telling you. Who, what is your story kind of thing, right? And like, she totally opened my eyes to what I suspected was what the adult world was going to be like. And she was like, yeah, like this is, this, she's kind of like, this is how it is. What are you gonna do about it? And she was very encouraging of all of her students um, to find out who they were. The only teacher I ever had that tried to encourage individuality as opposed to quashing it. All of my teachers were like, no, nope, we're gonna do it like everybody else. You're gonna do it, blah, blah, blah. Conform, 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 conform. And then this lady comes along. She doesn't care what she looks like. It's crazy, she, she never know what she's gonna say. You never know what she's gonna, she's just like, what do you wanna do? The most important part, I think, is that young people who are mentored, mentored uh, are also given a lot of space to explore and be creative. And that's, I can sometimes see there's, there's falling down with that. Like, for, for example, uh, young people in, in uh, the classical world, sometimes um, they'll be so focused on competitions and I read a fantastic quote uh, by one of our cello greats, Yo Yo Ma, who's a household name. Um, and someone asked him in this interview, uh, uh, do you do adjudications for, for competitions? And his answer was, yes, once. <laughs> and then went on to just completely just, just tear it down. He says, he says at the time when teenagers need to be exploring and discovering things and finding their own voice and finding new ways, they're boxed in to try and do things perfectly in a certain way. It's the exact thing not to do. And I was like, yo, yo, ma, oh my God, I loved you before, I loved you even more now, right? It was just like, yes, exactly. In the next episode, we'll learn how expressing yourself in creative ways can change your life. I'll see you here next time on the Island of the Arts.